The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good day, folks. Welcome to the January 27th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. And let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And the easiest way to do that, well, it's to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four ship, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I just past eight o'clock in the morning. That's right. Yeah, we're recording all the shows uh, this week between 8 and uh, 9. So if you are listening in at the 1 o'clock time frame, thanks so much for doing so. We're going to try to make this show as pertinent as we can for you. But if you are listening live, we would love to hear from you. So you can give us a call at 877-927-6648. If you can't call in, but you're listening between 8 and 9 and would like me to take a look at something, just go ahead and send me an email. Send it to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, if you'd be kind enough to put radio show question, of course, in our Tigers, then will any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we've got uh, U.S. equity futures pointing higher. The Dow is up by 44 points. The NASDAQ 190, that's about six tenths of a percent. The S&P 16 and the Russell's up five. If we take a look at what went on overseas last night, it was a sea of red in Asia. The Shanghai down one and seven tenths percent. That's 64 points. The Nikkei, three percent to the downside, 841 points there. Two percent for the Hang Seng. That's 482 points over in Australia. The S&P 200 there, one and seven tenths percent, 123. The DAX in Germany right now is off 15 points and the FTSE is up 52 we take a look at gold. She's trading out at 1806. It's testing the uh, bottom of its uh, bullish structure daily profile, I believe. Silver trading out at 2303 out there. If we take a look at the 30 year Treasury, up 14 ticks, trading at 154 and a quarter. And the US dollar index, it's on a roll. It's up, uh, well, it's up 10 minute delay. Yeah, 9710 out there. It's up by uh, seven tenths of a percent. So, where do we want to begin? I'll tell you where we should begin. Let's deal with the. Uh, we had the, the Fed announcement yesterday with regard to what they're thinking or doing out there. And, and most people believe most people believe that the pullback that we've seen in the markets is because of the Fed, because of the Fed deciding that it's going to eventually raise interest rates. Are you in that camp? Well, let me tell you what camp you should be in. It's called the camp of facts out here. And the camp of facts say, I don't know where people get that information from. Or I do know where they, or I know I know where they don't get the information from. They don't get the information from looking back at stock chart patterns out here. So the very bottom panel of this screen is the uh, is the Fed discount rate, and uh, which right now is left unchanged at 0.25 out there, and the top portion is the uh, Dow. Now, what I want you to take a look is go back in uh, 2003. We saw interest rates rise. What did we see take place inside the Dow? Did we see it actually tank and move to the south? With higher interest rates? Now, hey, let's not, 2003, that was light years ago. So let's not focus on 2003. How about let's come to 2016? The Fed began raising rates in 2016. What did the market do? You can take a look at the blue arrow. It went to the upside. So the mere fact that people believe that because we're raising interest rates, that the market is going to tank, they clearly just want to ignore history. Now, I'm not saying that patterns can't change because certainly they can. But let's just look at the factual information. It's right in front of us. You tell me, is the threat of raising interest rates going to tank the market? Is that what's going on? Well, I would say factually, the answer there is no. So good, we get to start there. So then, so where do we go from here? Let's, I don't need to save that. So don't save, there we go. Okay. 
what the heck is going on here? Okay, so now let's go back to the uh, market. So we know that the market's moving lower really is, or look, if, it, if it's being driven because of that, the threat of rising interest rates, if that's the only thing, then what we need to do is go out there and find bottoms, right? If the market making a bottom. Now, each of us know that the market did generate a bottom signal on Monday, that big, huge day to the downside, back to the upside. The reason that we know that is because some of the patterns that you and I trade are the A to B equals CD patterns. And what you and I do, what you and I know, is that the pattern, the A to B equals CD pattern, is not going to complete until you get a bullish reversal candle. Here's the A to B equals CD on the ES mini. In fact, let's just simply expand this out so we're all only looking at the exact same chart out here and see what we know, because there is new information for me to be able to report to you this morning. So here's the A to B equals CD pattern. The one-to-one -one level is at 4504. Is that the place where you should have bought, just simply buy the D point, the one-to-one -one area? Absolutely, positively not. Why? Because you want the cavalry to arrive to tell us that they're attempting at least to form a bottom out here. If you don't get to the one-to-one, -one, if you don't see that at the one-to-one -one level, it says price is going to go target the 1.272 area. That was 44.39. Did we get a bullish reversal candle there? No, we didn't. Where did price go? To the 1.618 area. Did we get a bullish reversal candle there? Not technically. Uh, price made it down to the one-to-two level. That's when that bullish hammer candle, that's this uh, candle session right here from January 24th formed. That completed a Gartley buy pattern. In a Gartley pattern, what you're looking for is an A to B equals CD to the downside that completes, that gives you that completion signal. In a market where there is an uptrend, that would be considered, this would be a considered a Gartley buy. Now, it could be that what we really have out here is just a good old-fashioned consolidation. Because what the ES Mini has done is simply got back to the October lows. Those have held. And uh, and we know that at the top, we have kind of, you know, a double topping. So this could be a very large consolidation. Could be. Not saying that that's, but it, it's a pattern that is present right now as we both take, as we all take a look at it. So we've got the completed A to B equals CD to the downside. We got the reaction to the sell-off uh, yesterday. Now, was that Fed driven or was it driven by something else? I believe it was driven by something else, but we're not going to go into it at this stage out here. But nonetheless, let's just stick with the patterns that are in play because this show is really all about patterns that we look at each and every day, each and every afternoon or morning. And so what we now have here, what we didn't have yesterday, or we didn't have it until 6.01 last evening, is other than the support of the bullish hammer candle, which is plenty, and that's fine. And that's, uh, by the way, that low is 42.12.75. If we do see a close below 42.12.75, we have an expression, which is if you're long, you're wrong. And that's when you close below a hammer candle. And that would then say we'd have lower price. We could take a look at where those lower prices might be out here. But right now we're dealing with the fact that we have a bottoming signal. And we now have a new profile that is forming. It is bullish in structure. It has changed a couple of different. I'm going to get rid of the A to B equals CD pattern out here. So let's not belabor that. So now you can clearly see the bullish structured daily profile. And where price found support this morning, it got down to a low of 42.63. The bottom of that profile is 42.58. Perfect. Now, with regard to bullish structured profiles, and the opposite would be true for a bear structured profile, <clears throat> if price is able to close above the center of that level, that's at 4396, that then is going to suggest, because at the center of the profile is where both buyers and sellers reside. They believe there's fair value in this range of 4258 to 4625. And if buyers can push it up above 4396, they should be able to make a run up to the 4625 level. But there is a pit stop, at least, in between then and now. We come back for this break. We'll go take a look at that pit stop. Steve Rhodes with TF and Ed. We'll be right back. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. 
Sign up today. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back. So we were taking a look at the daily ES mini out there. Take a look at the new profile. By the way, this new profile that's attempting to form will not be confirmed until this evening. So it could change positions, uh, could change positions uh, during the day. But right now we do know where buyers and sellers are lined up. The buyers are the support levels at 4258 and the sellers are lined up at 4625. Now, I'd mentioned that price, if price is able to close above the center, and right now that's not a condition that's present. It might be at uh, 118 in the afternoon. So you're going to want to understand where's the ES Mini trading? Is it trading above uh, 4397, we'll call it? And if it is, then the next move is not to 4625. The next move is to 4472. What do you mean, Steve O? Let me just pull over this uh, white background chart here. This is the daily time frame. And uh, the reason that I say 4472 or thereabouts is because that's the oscillator and change line. The oscillator and change line, when it changes colors, which it did on the trading day of uh, looks like uh, January 19th, what we typically see is price and that line catch up to each other. You would really see that. When do you typically see that, Steve-O? Well, you typically see that when you get some type of bottoming pattern. Well, we know that we've got that with that uh, bullish hammer candle, the uh, Gertley buy pattern or the buy the D point, whichever way you like to uh, uh, take a look at it and term it. And so this then suggests that we should see a move up to that 4472 level. Now, look, as price moves higher or lower, that number is going to change. So that's just a, a, a general idea. Now, if price is able to get up to that level, 4472 and rejects it, that would be the next place to put on a short position. If price closes above 4472, well, then the message would be where would be the next place to put on the short position or what would the market be communicating to us? The market then would be communicating to us that as long as this profile remains in effect out here, the price would then go target the 4625 level. If you ask me which the area I would prefer to short, I'd say 4625. But we have to take things one step at a time out here. Now, so the ES Mini, and let me just do this here. So we really have kind of the same patterns that are going on. But with regard to new information, the new information is from the ES and inside the NQ. The NQ also attempting to form a new profile. Now, let me do this here. I'm going to, so you can see the A to B equals CD to the downside. Makes a 1.1.272 1. 1. expansion. Forms that bullish hammer candle on the same day. That was on Monday on the 24th. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn off the A to B equals CD pattern. We don't need to believe or labor that. And now when I do that, you can clearly see, well, let me just turn off price. I'll make it even more clear for you to see. Again, remember, this profile 
does will not be confirmed until this evening. The reason it won't be confirmed is because I'm using Stevie's super Doppler tool that uh, tries to seek out profiles uh, as they are beginning to form out here. And so now you can see that bullish structure profile. Supported 13900 resistance at 14874 and where both buyers and sellers believe there's fair value with inside this range is at 14095 If price is able to close today above 14095 the signal that's being generated for you and I is that it wants to make a run for that 14874 level. But like the ES Mini, it also has a uh, has to deal with its oscillator and change line. Now, it doesn't really have to do perform its test. What do you mean by that, Stevie? Well, what I mean here is if we take a look, remember I've shared with you that when the oscillator and change line changes colors, what we're looking for is information, and that information is what happens when price tests that uh, OUL. And here if we take a look at the NQ, it actually formed an A to B equals CD to the downside with this bullish hammer candle, the one that formed here on January 10th. That then took price right up to that red oscillator and change line. That was really the sell signal out there because that was telling us we had a falling price oscillator below zero. That is a bearish pattern. We didn't know whether or not the bottom of the profile would hold, but certainly once that bottom of that hammer candle gave way, then it was a move to the downside. Remember, you close below the bottom of a hammer candle. The expression is, or the expression I like to use, is if you are long, you are wrong out here. So because that test has already taken place with regard to the oscillator and change line, really the NQ doesn't have to move up there. But if the ES Mini is uh, in, in all the markets do decide to rally here, and I believe that they will, um, <clears throat> we may see an early morning flush, but I do believe at this stage here we're likely to see this rally unfold out here and so for the nq the area the level you want to be watching if if i'm correct with regard to the rally unfolding out here is a move to 14694 ish or so that's the oscillator and change line if price is able to close above its oscillator and change line uh, then what we'd be looking at is the signal for a move up to that 14874 level now that's assuming again that this profile remains in place out here so you've got two new profiles attempting to form tomorrow morning when we're together we'll know whether they have taken effect or not if you're a newsletter subscriber hopefully you'll know by this evening out here now the dow and the russell 2000 their profiles have already completed they've already confirmed and so in the case of the dow as i mentioned yesterday it's the third largest profile in relation to points from top to bottom that has formed since 2007. <coughs> Why'd you stop at 2007? Because that's as far back as I look. That was plenty enough data out there. And so what you're watching for inside the Dow is a move to the 33, 30, 74 level. That's the center of its bullish structured profile. And a close above that, yesterday it was tested, it was rejected. A close above that is then going to signal its intent to try for the 36054 level. Like the ES. <coughs> it also had a recent change of color that had not been tested. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first area that it would need to then take out to suggest that huge move higher is in approximately the 34,778 level. Remember, as price moves higher, that number will move higher. Um, I don't know by how many points, but, uh, you know, I do like 34,777 because I like those James Bond movies out there. Well, I'd say 777, that's not, that's it. That's, that's, that. I was thinking the one-armed bandit out here. And uh, so that's where, so that's what you should be looking at, whether it's at 824 in the morning or whether it's 124 in the afternoon, or certainly the close at the end of the uh, day. Now, in the case of the Dow equity future contract, if you wait for a close above the center of its profile, uh, which is at um, 34,374, and the oscillator and change size is 34,782, that's not really a great reward risk trade out there. But at least in helping you interpret the markets and what its intent is, that's what's going to be helpful to you. Now, in the case of the Russell 2000, just to finish off the equity future contracts out here, it has an A to B equals CD to the downside. It also has a TD9 count bottom. Here, let me show you those patterns out here. We'll pull this in there. So you've got two patterns, two bottoming patterns, that is. Does having two bottoming patterns make it more likely of a bottom than having one? Or does just three better than two? I don't know the answer to that. Um, what I do know is that you've got bottoming signals. Now, in the case of the Russell yesterday, it generated for us a bearish message out here. Now, the profiles that I have on my white background charts, Ninja Trader, are slightly different than the ones that you just saw in the black background chart. Both are really helpful to us. And what uh, took place uh, yesterday, is this, yeah, this is today already? Yeah, okay. And what took place yesterday is price tested and rejected that red oscillator and change line. 
Again, a bearish message. But on the white background charts, what price did was it pulled back in the test at the bottom of its profile, which is 1953. So the bottom of the profile on the white background charts is 1953. The back, black background charts is at 1982. Which one is correct? They're both correct out here. we got to use them both. So ideally, if you see a close back above 1982, we're trading at 1982 two basically as we speak right now what you should at least then see is move up to that oscillator and change line it is currently printed at 2031 so the russell 2000 is likely where you would get the most amount of information for a further rally because what it generated for us yesterday is a bearish message but right now we're going to say so and support is held whether the bottom of the profile on the white background charts or the black background charts is correct what held was the bull sash candle Bar number eight of a TD9 count, and that low is 1925.20. That's what price has to close below to suggest low price out. But our price is able to close above 2031. That suggests that the rally is on. Steve Rhodes with TFN. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we got a great question inside the Tiger's Den. It's uh, from Ruby, and she's asking about the ES Mini on a weekly time frame out here. So that's your upper right-hand panel chart out here. I'm not going to expand it out at the uh, moment uh, because uh, – and her question is, is basically this. If you take a look at the retracement from low to high, so we're looking at the 2020 low out here, which in the ES Mini was 2109 and a quarter, up to its high, the high from uh, January 3rd, the week that began January 3rd, 4808 and, and uh, 25. The retracement level so far is is just above, slightly just above a 0.236 retracement. And her question is, 
isn't that a bullish signal for the market, not being able to even do a 0 0.382 retracement, let alone get to the 0.618 area? And ordinarily, I would say the answer would be yes out here. Uh, and the reason I would say ordinarily, and so we can see the 0.236 levels at 41.71 out here, uh, 0.382, 37.77. So I'd say, yeah, that's a that's a conclusion that you can absolutely draw out there. But the, I think the other conclusion or something to really consider out here is that last week what we saw inside of the ES Mini was a change in trend signal. The change in trend signal, Ruby, just take yourself back to February of 2020 out here. And the week of February 24th, we saw a close below the bottom of that profile. What we've seen since the March 2020 bottom is every pullback has found support at the bottom of the weekly profiles. Those have been, from a weekly perspective, the buy the, you know, deep, the, the buy the uh, dip out there. So if we get a close this week below 45, 49, 25 out there, what it's really signaling to you and I, I believe, is that the move lower is not done. That doesn't mean that we don't have nice counter trend rallies. In fact, you could have a gigantic counter trend rally out here just simply from a profiles pers perspective. If you look at the Dow, here if we expand out the Dow, it could get to, well, of course, it could do anything at once. But just simply from a technical standpoint, it could get all the way up to 36054, the top of that profile. I'm not saying that's where it's going right now because we don't have that signal out there. But coming back to your question, yes, I understand exactly what you're looking at. But that would then also mean that what I would have to do or we would have to do is ignore the fact that a key level of support that since March of 2020 has always been the buy the dip. And we don't have that right now. And so, therefore, I think longer term, what this is telling us is we're not done heading lower out there. So I hope that helps in answering that question out there. If not, just uh, type something else in the uh, in the uh, den chat and uh, we'll we'll get to that. You're, you're welcome. So let's go to our first caller. It's Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, thanks so much for joining us at 532 in the morning. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing great, Steve. How are you today? Excellent. Always good to hear your voice. And uh, so Goldilocks is where you and I are going to spend some time. Um, I've got up the four core charts out here, daily, weekly, monthly, and quarterly. Uh, so how can I best help you? Well, I'd first like to thank you for what you just went through with all the, you know, equity features and all You're the welcome. different levels to be watching. And I was uh, feverishly <laughs> jotting all those numbers down. So thanks for oh, that. Good, 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 good. And then, hopefully uh, hopefully yeah, I wasn't just, dyslexic. Uh, my question on gold is, I know you had a level that was around like in the 1830s that didn't hold. So is this now just kind of more bearish or is there any hope for this? You know, I guess even on a shorter term to maybe find some kind of bottom. Sure. So if we take a look at uh, gold, now we'll just begin with these charts here. Um, I'm in, At the moment, I'm trying to get over to my other gold charts as well so we can take a look at them and, and try to answer these questions. So what you and I know right now is that price is testing. It's trading just slightly below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. And that's at 1808.30. We're trading at 1806 right now. So if at the end of the day, so I wouldn't be surprised to see gold hold that 1808.30 level, but uh, we're going to go take, we got to go really take a look at the intraday charts here because prices moved lower uh, since uh, uh, since I, I put together the, the newsletter this morning. But price is trading both into that support level, Brent, and the uh, and, a, and a rising trend line. So I would answer the, the question this way, if it, were, if it was a question, which is a close below 1808.30 today, would then open up the door to a move to 1763 or 1790. And now all I'm doing, folks, is I'm just taking a look at the support and resistance levels for the daily and the weekly time frame. If you close below the bottom of a weekly, a daily profile, and then go to the next time frame higher, that obviously is weekly. And then I would go from weekly to monthly and so forth. So I don't think we have a uh, the information yet to let us know whether this is going to hold or not, but it's up against two levels of support. And as I say, if it does close below those odds favor, move to the 1790-1763 level. So, Brent, before we move off of these charts here, what questions do – oh, and I don't know if you're – are you, are you able to see the charts in Tiger TV? Yes, I am, Steve. Okay, perfect. Okay. So is there any questions that you have about these or, or something else that you see that we should look at? I guess from a trading standpoint, for you, if you would want to see kind of the close for the day, is that what you would do before, or, or if you saw enough of a rebound off of that level, then you would try to make a, a long trade, or what would what would be your trading strategy? Absolutely. So great question. Thank you for asking it. It would really be knowing that we're into a strong area of support. If I could see some bottoming signals on the intraday timeframes, that would be my signal. 
And so if we take a look, we just start with the 30 minute chart out here. Uh, we don't have a bottom signal yet. We did about an hour and a half ago. It was a bullish cam hammer candle that uh, uh, formed at seven o'clock. And that was confirming a road's momentum indicator signal. But price is now below that. So what we know right now, and it would still stretch, it still has those road's momentum indicator signals. I would need to see another bullish reversal candle. Now, what we also know is that the key level of resistance here from a 30 minute standpoint, Brent, is at 1812.50. So you'd really wanna see price close above that. But to really get a determination of, of that low holding and it being, a, and, and it being a, a, a good low, a solid low out here, is a close above 18.16.10. And 18.16.10 is the TD9 count breakdown resistance level. And if we take a look at what transpired here overnight during the early this morning, we did have gold rally right up to that level and fail. So 18.16.10 is really gonna be a key level for you to observe. I would say, Brent, if price closes above that, then we're rally on, and rally on perhaps to take us back to the 18.33 or, or maybe higher than that. So, and I'll just expand out the 30 minute chart here. Any questions about this chart or what, what we've discussed there? No, that's great, Steve. Thanks for providing those numbers. Okay, perfect. So everybody, 181610 is the key level. So if you're watching the show at, at, at 1.37 in the afternoon and price is trading above that, then gold is likely to rally further. Now, Brent, as we take a look at the 60, the 120, the 240, the five hour time frame chart, the only potential bottoming signal that is present at the moment is on the 240 minute chart, and that is in bar number nine of a TD9 count. Now, what we know is that the low can form on bars number nine, which does not complete until 10 o'clock. That makes that 30 minute chart more valuable to you. Um, but then the next four hour chart would be two o'clock this afternoon because the low can form on the bar following bar number nine. So how I would be putting this together here, uh, Brent, if you, had, if you had these patterns that you were watching, I'd be, again be focused on that 30 minute chart looking for the bottoming signal out there. Any questions about these charts? No, that's great, Steve, thank you. Okay, perfect. So I've answered your questions with regard to gold? You have, yeah, I mean, wow. did it very, as always, always very thoroughly <laughs> with all the numbers I wanted, yeah, I couldn't ask for more. Perfect, so the last thing that we'll do here, folks, before we, uh, before we let uh, Brent go back to sleep out there, <laughs> yeah, so we'll go take a look at those. Uh, take a look at those black background charts. And the black background chart we're looking at here is just trying to understand what is gold doing in the major currencies. And as we speak right now, gold's trading lower in terms of dollars. Gold is lower in terms of euros. Gold is lower in terms of yen. Gold is lower in terms of pounds. So the sellers right now, Brent, they have the upper hand. But again, it closed above eighteen sixteen ten. They will have lost that upper hand. So Brent, thanks so much for calling, and uh, we'll look forward to speaking to you again soon. All right, thank you so much, Steve. Have a great day and a great weekend. You bet. Steve Rhodes with TFN, folks. We'll be back in just a few moments. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should 
be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. We're recording the show today and again tomorrow between 8 and 9. If you're listening live, we'd love to hear from you. You can give us a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, right now, we've got all the U.S. equity futures are pointed a bit higher. Dow's up about 90 points. The uh, NASDAQ 104, S&P 23, and the Russell's up nine. So let's get to some of the questions that have come in. The first one coming in from Hector and the fuel injectors. Oh, by the way, before we get to Hector's uh, question out there, uh, Microsoft had staged a, a really nice uh, move, didn't they, uh, yesterday? And of course, and this this is just shows you the importance of those market profiles. Where did price find resistance? Right at the bottom of that profile. Once you close below that, old support can become new resistance. That's what we've got. So what you're going to watch in the case of Microsoft, clearly, uh, even though this was not what was called about, is 308.16 level. If price is able to close above that, where's going to price head to next? Boy, that was a wonderful question, wasn't it? 315.09 and above that 322.02. But right now, what you know is that Microsoft's rally yesterday and then the sell off is price went right to the level of resistance, the bottom of that profile. All right, now let's get to the question. The first one coming in from Hector and Patty. And what Hector and Patty want to take a look at is uh, AMT, American Tower, out here. So let's get that up on the screen. And the question is uh, yeah, we, we'll, we'll have time to do two of these instruments out here. So AMT and PLD are backing down, patiently waiting to buy the bullish turnaround. A to B equals CD points out there. Okay, so I've got the I've got the gist of it. So if we take a look at AMT out here, American Tower, here's the A to B equals CD pattern that Hector is uh, taking. Look, let's just simply go right to the white background charts right now. Well, I will say this: or where price ran into resistance yesterday, Hector and Patty is at 253.86. 253.86 happens to be the top of that daily profile. Now the bottom is at 243.25, and you close just below. But you're back inside this swing point that formed out here a couple of days ago. This was the Monday swing point that had volume there of uh, 2.7 million shares. And yesterday you pulled back into it lighter volume, 2.3 million shares. Okay, now let's get to the white background chart. So. With regard to the buy the D point, and this is the daily time frame that we're looking at, you already have that signal. You have that signal because you have that bullish candle. So that uh, January 24th candle was a bullish piercing candle. And again, you've got this uh, slightly bullish structure profile. Price did close below that. But you do have your signal. Now, because you've waited this far and because you know that 253.86 is resistance here and you're looking at this for more of a longer term position, I would just wait. Well, you, you get two choices. You can buy it right here. I don't know what it's trading at in the pre-market. Or you can wait for a close above 253.86 to give you a suggestion that a key level of resistance has at least failed. That's what the daily chart tells us. What's the weekly chart tell us? Weekly chart says, oh, man, Hector and Patty, you really should see a close above 249.44 tomorrow. 
because if you don't, price has broken through a key level of support, its breakdown area, and that could be suggested to move back to its March lows out here, um, which is in the 200 range. On a monthly basis, you've got a confirmed Rhodes momentum indicator top. So here's the bullish side, here's the bearish side. The bullish side is price has pulled back on a monthly basis into the support level. The support level, because it's bullish in structure, is between 229.37 and 239.99. So the, the monthly is saying, okay, we're back at support. That's good. Still have the topping signal. But whenever you get a topping signal, all that really indicates to you and I is price should make its way back to support levels. And there can be multiple support levels. And if you listen to the show, you know that, in fact, there are. So the daily, so here's how I would trade it. Knowing that, knowing all this information out here, Hector, it would still be a close above 253.86 would be your buy point or it would be a signal that this is likely to continue to head higher out there. Clearly on a, um, like it has a potential on a yearly basis to have a TD9 count uh, top out there, but let's not focus on that uh, just yet. Your second request was to take like a ticker symbol PLD. So let's get that punched up on the screen for us. And Hector, did I answer your question? I think I did. I hope I did. And if I didn't, then please uh, write back to me and we'll make sure that I do. Prologis is what PLD is, which is pulled back to the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. So the key level that has been tested several times over the last week or so has been this one. Well, let me give you the right number here is uh, 151.74. Now, you closed at 151.72 yesterday. Um, that's okay. But let's take a look at the PLD, uh, Prologis Inc. On the, uh, day. Now, there's no A to B equals CD pattern here uh, that has completed. It, it would have to close. You'd have to see it close below 149.82. But we know as price is sitting at support on the daily time frame, support at the weekly time frame, Bottom of that profile is 150.83, and it's above the week above the profiles on a monthly basis. So there's the potential of a bottom. Let's see if there's any other kind of pattern out here. And the answer is there is not. And yesterday, you can see the oscillator and change line had changed colors yesterday or the day before. And yesterday was a uh, bearish result of that test. It could get back to bullish if you saw a close above 155.40 today. But the breakout level, then this, so the next level of support, if price does close below the bottom of that the daily profile, Hector is going to be 144.36. But if it closes below this hammer candle, that would be right now your B point. Yeah, that would be the B point of the A to B equals CD. So level to be watching there is 149.82. Then you'd have your A to B equals CD to the downside, and we could take a look at uh, that. So I hope that helps you out with regard to Prologis. PLD is the uh, ticker symbol. And uh, thanks so much for the uh, question this morning and getting up early with us. Next question coming in from Susanna. And Susanna wants to take a look at, would you do your analysis of Bitcoin? Absolutely. And UVXY. That one's a more difficult one, but let's go take a look at the Bitcoin. Let's take a look at what Bitcoin is doing. We'll do a, a couple of different charts out here, but we'll take a look at that. Bitcoin is getting ready to roll over from the January contract to the February contract. If you, where did it go? It should be, here we go. So now you've got both contracts out here. And the Susanna, one of the things that you want to know is where is support and resistance. So on both contracts, I'll give you the numbers. In the case of the January contract, we're looking at 34,993 as support, resistance 38,200. The case of the February contract, what we're looking at is support is at 35.064 and resistance is 38.242. If you're trading the future contract, what you're going to be trading here is the uh, is the February contract. So that's what I'd be paying attention to. Your other question is, well, what else is uh, Bitcoin doing? So if you give me just a moment here, we're going to switch over to my eight panel charts. And you'll be able to take a look at Bitcoin for multiple time frames. Now, what you'll see, what happened there? Um, sorry. Uh, come on, get down there. Okay, so on the upper left-hand side, I, I really the, the monthly and the weekly have continuous contracts up there. It's the only way that I can get enough data to take a look at it. Uh, so what we know here is that uh, what Bitcoin is doing, it has a TD9 count bottom on the weekly basis. And if price closes below last week's low, last week's low, by the way, is 36,150, that's going to signal to you that price should continue to head lower. If price is able to hold that level, then a key area, a key bottoming signal will have held. So that's the level to be looking at tomorrow. On a daily time frame, I don't have any kind of bottoming signal. There's not an A to B. Well, there is an A to B equals CD down pattern, but what there's not is a bullish reversal candle. So we don't have a confirmation of a bottom. What we have is just simply price consolidated in between support and resistance out there. So that's what the uh, daily time frame is telling us. On a 30-minute uh, chart out here, so intraday if you're trading this, if price were able to take out, close above 36,950, that's going to suggest a continued move higher. 
So that continued move higher, you know that your real key resistance level is going to be 38,242. So that's one price target. Another price target or resistance level is at 37,183, the top of the 60 minute profile. Another level of resistance, 38,415. TD9 breakdown level on the 120 minute time frame chart. So the most important thing for you to watch it, Suzanne, I don't know if you're an intraday trader or what, I would be watching in Bitcoin, 36,950. Price able to close above that, you should see a further rally inside of Bitcoin. See Rhodes with TF and Ed. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN. Educating investors. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, billable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we're going to finish off the uh, show looking at the uh, biotech sector for the S&P 500. That ticker symbol is XBI. In the left-hand side in the daily time frame, you can see a completed A to B equals CD to the downside. It completed when it generated this nice bullish engulfing candle on the 24th, like most of the markets generated bullish reversal signals there. And so the 24th is really a key level for many stocks out there and uh, certainly the indices. So you already have a uh, confirmed by the D point. Rich has a long position at this stage out here. And so you like that bottom signal. What you didn't like is really yesterday's action, which was a test and rejection of the oscillator and change line. Now, price was pulling back with uh, a bit lower volume than the trading day of uh, Monday out here. But what you're really looking for here, Rich, is a close above that oscillator and change line. 
because it's a uh, it's a profile which has supported 88.59 and resistance at 98.42 and the center's at 93.51. You really want to see a close above 93.51 today. If you get that, prices then move to 98.42. If the bulls can handle those sellers, and that means take close above that. Then you're looking to move to 115.64. So the daily has a nice looking uh, chart pattern out here. The weekly, not so much. We take a look at the weekly chart. It's likely telling us over time it wants to target 77.79. So no bottoming signal here on the weekly. If we look at the monthly time frame chart, also no bottoming signal. And you don't like this because price has closed below the bottom of its profile for the monthly time frame. However, this is the big however. What price has done here, Rich, is it's tested its breakout level of support, 89.45, and this is a monthly TD9 count bottom. So the low this month could hold. So if you put this together, and by the way, this formed with a TD9 count top, so now you've got the exact TD9 count bottom. What the X value is signaling to you is it most certainly does want to try to form that bottom. And what you really need to see is a close above 98.42 today. So folks, thanks so much for joining me again between 8 and 9. Let's do this again tomorrow morning. I'll look forward to it. And, uh, and hey, we've got a treat for you. Coming up next, I've been the warm-up band for Basil Chapman. He's filling in for Tommy, so stay tuned for that. Of course, if you're listening at 1 o'clock, your favorite polar bear, David White, is up next. Have a terrific Thursday, folks. We'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den trading room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors this is tfnn the Tiger Financial News Network. TFNN Headline News Update. 
Good morning, folks. This is Steve Rhodes coming to you live from the shores of, well, it is sunny, Delray Beach, Florida. This is your 9 a.m. update. Currently, you have the U.S. equity futures pointing higher. The Dow futures up 183 points, the NASDAQ 140, S&P futures up 35, Russell's up 14. If we take a look at what went on overseas last night, it was a sea of red in Asia, uh, down 3% in the case of the uh, Nikkei, 2% for the Hang Seng. But over in Europe right now, they're having a party. You've got both the DAX and the FTSE trading the upside. Gold's trading out at 1799, silver 22. Let's go take a look at our nine panel market update chart out here. We begin by taking a look at the ES Mini, which, by the way, is attempting to form a new bullish structure daily profile. This will not be confirmed until tomorrow. But right now, you know, you've got support at 42.58 and a resistance at 46.25. If the ES Mini closes today about 43.96, you should see a move to about the 44.74 level. The problem for the ES Mini is its spot volatility index. It is falling, but it's still above its 50-day exponential moving average, which is at 2183. So any rug pulls to the downside, those could happen, and it could happen quickly. The NQ is also attempting to form a bullish structure profile. Now, in this case, right now, price is trading above the center, which is at 14095, and the close above 14095 is going to suggest a move to 14701. The U.S. dollar index is strong like bull. And in fact, if it closes above the top of its weekly profile this week, 9691, it's telling you it wants to move up to 98. 855. Gold is pulled back right now. It's trading below the bottom of its bullish structured profile. Maybe signaling to you and I wants to go target the 1790 level. Silver sitting at support, the bottom of its daily profile, which is at 2280, 2288. Lightsweet crude, uh, the last level before this is, gets on to an amazing breakout area is the top of its quarterly profile, and that's at 8903. That is its price target. Natural gas, always struggling, not always struggling, but struggling with resistance at the top of its descending trend line, and the top of its daily profile what's going on from a intraday standpoint is we've got the a to b equals cd pattern to the upsides and it's really the dow that's got the confirmation because this was a td9 count top earlier this morning price is above that high from five o'clock this morning so the dow you should expect to move up to about the 34 492 to 34 651 level the es mini its targets are 44 13 44 38 the nq 14 475 to 14 584 and the russell 2001 to 2014. The question is, what happens if and when a sell the D point on the 30 minute charts form? Where does price pull back? Folks, stay tuned. You've got some great programming. Basil Chapman filling in for Tommy O'Brien. I'll see you tomorrow on Fantastic Friday at about 8.06 in the morning. Take care, folks.